The island is called Claret Island, as you know. This island was actually a, um, a mill, had a mill on it, a clever mill, because when the early settlers started logging the area, beautiful specimen trees on all the islands, <clears throat> they started with the islands first because it was easiest to get at the lumber and cut it and ship it and transport it. So they bring the logs from the other islands to this island and cut the logs into clapboards or siding for buildings and reload it on their barges and ship it off to wherever they were during their construction. The fellow that uh, had the idea for it was uh, Samuel Frederick Houston uh, from Philadelphia and uh, he was one of the founders of the Penn Central Railroad, one of the blue bloods of Philadelphia society. He came across Clabbert Island and bought it with the idea of building a home on it. But he passed on before he was able to do that. And his son, Henry Howard Houston, finished the house and uh, the story goes that uh, he had a hundred uh, workers from the boatyards over in Portland coming here and building and built this house in a hundred days. We had been sailing this main for a couple of several years and it's beautiful sailing and, and we loved cruising the coastline of the islands and looking at beautiful homes. Finally Don said well you know we should really think about buying a place instead of and looking, looking out from the house instead of looking on the shore from the boat. And I thought, I'm fine with that. So, but I wanted, a, I wanted an old home on an island, remote, with a, with a protected anchorage for a boat, and a beach, if possible, and privacy. On one of our trips, this went over a period of a couple of years, we're heading back to Portland Airport, and the, the realtor said, there's a house available on an island here. So on the way out, one time, the realtor said, why don't you just stop by? And we took a, they, we got, took a little boat over, and there was no dock, but there was the pier, and you had to climb up the ladder to the pier. The pier was gorgeous. We thought, oh my gosh, who would have brought all these big granite boulders over here to create such an incredible pier? And so we walked down the pier. Came up the hill and saw this is interesting, and that's when I saw the house. And the house was, you know, a little bit columns were skewed and the, the shutters were falling off and it was woods, you could hardly see the water, but it had good bones. So it had been empty for a while? Um, there had been three families that had been using it but hadn't done anything to it for about 20 years. And my husband opened the door and he walked in and he came back out, shut the door, and put his hand on his forehead and he said, oh my word, wait till you see this. I thought, oh my gosh, it must be horrible because... He couldn't know, bear to look anymore. He couldn't bear to look. And when I walked in, I went, oh no, it's beautiful. Because it had not been redone. And it had it, the old, you know, the old knob and tubing that you could, you could smell the wood. Mm -hmm. It had charm and nobody had done anything to modernize it or, or sort of take the charm away. What, what drove the tradition of summer cottages was the fact that there was no air conditioning and they came to Maine to stay cool during the summer. So in the, in the Houston's case they came uh, with their entourage, they had eight Irish maids and a German governess and the cooks and so forth. So they made their house big enough so that uh, staff could live in it, live in the farmhouse. Backed up on the fourth floor there's room for the uh, eight maids to live. Every fireplace seems to have uh, some sort of a, of a bow, a motif of the, say, the bow of a ship. The, the, the workers, uh, having come from the shipyards, introduced the uh, idea of that architectural motif to represent the bow of a ship. So every fireplace has some sort of a rendition of, uh, of that uh, design concept. All of this wood is, uh, is uh, exposed and uh, not painted and uh, in some of the beams and so forth you can see the fingerprints of the workers because the oil from their hand prints uh, has remained on the beams. When we first came in it was very dark and dirty because mm -hmm. I, I had a century of uh, soot and, and smoke and dust from from the use of uh, fireplaces and living here and and uh, so uh, when we came in, I, I, I wanted to hire a guy to come in and clean the wood, but leave it in, back in its natural state. 
in, in the sun parlor there, though, if you see that we have um, some silhouettes. I noticed Those them. silhouettes up there. And um, the German governess uh, would cut uh, shadow silhouettes from guests that were here. Because uh, the house was electrified in about 1904 or 05. It was quite a novelty to have electric lights in a home. And so this parlor game of um, cutting silhouettes became fashionable. So they would cut those out and they put the paper up on the wall. And over the years, the paper deteriorated and came, finally came apart, but it left the a protected area underneath it. And so you can see the reverse silhouette. And so the first year that we were here, uh, we, we did the paper silhouettes. <laughs> And we put them up on the wall in the dining room. As you can, as you can see in the dining room there, uh, we have the white paper up there. And hopefully in a hundred years, our silhouettes will be indelibly uh, impressioned on the, on the wood. Maine has probably got, the, in my opinion, the best boating in the world. Because along its entire shoreline, there are over 4,400 islands. And just in the Casco Bay here, uh, from from Portland Light to uh, Cape uh, Cape Small, uh, there it's about 20 miles. There are about 360 islands. So there's plenty of protected sailing in and amongst these islands to do. It. And and uh, all all of the islands have are unique and have their own interests. Some of the islands have tiny little fishing villages on them. You can go in. And, drop a hook and have a lobster dinner. Uh, as, you, as you know, the house is sort of built on a rock on the side of a hill. The house has several levels to it. The lower level was the kitchen. The staff would come down from their attic through the servant stairs right down to the, to the kitchen and prepare all the meals. Well, the owners and the occupants of the house never used that. That was a, that was a servant's kitchen. Our builder and, and interior designer thought, well, why don't we make the dining room into a family kitchen? I said, no, I don't want to destroy the integrity of this beautiful room. So rather than, I, we, took out, we, we took out all the partitions in the, in the servant's kitchen and just opened it, the entire area up and made it into a traditional, uh, up-to-date family kitchen. The only a new construction we added to this house was when we added this outside the stair tower. That rather than have the narrow and foreboding servant stairs as the only access to the family room, I wanted to have a little bit more a grander stairway. So we, we added this outside stair tower to the house so that uh, you, you, you could, con it was then feel connected to the, to the lower level family room. The weather uh, sometimes can be a little nippy here with the, with the ocean breeze coming in. So when it's hot, it's really nice and cool on the on the ocean side. When it's too cold, we can go on the on the west side and be protected. People ask, how do you get fresh water? Because you're surrounded by salt water. Mm -hmm. Well, the rain hits the ground, seeps through the rocks, and forms a, an aquifer, a bubble, a bubble of water, if you will. And so. About 20 feet down, we hit the fresh water, and in that bubble, even though we're above sea level, and the and the water goes to about 20 feet below sea level. The woodshed was converted to our battery storage room, and we we installed uh, solar panels, photovoltaic solar panels, on the roof of the barn. I don't know if you saw. Yes, them. I did notice them. Mm -hmm. And those provide for uh, good solar electricity during the nice summer, sunny day. Well, the beautiful part about being on an island in the middle of a fairly active bay and being the only real home on the island, then uh, it's totally private. People will not, people don't just come visit you without being invited. Yes. And people don't come ashore because it's private. So walking around on the island on the trails in the woods, it's like you're out in the wilderness. When you need to go ashore, it's a short trip. Well, I'll tell you, I, uh, I, I, I really love the, the fact that there's uh, 
history to this house and that so many families over the generations have enjoyed it and loved it and, and I don't think that any family has loved it any more than, than uh, our family and uh, so uh, Don and I have really felt that we've, uh, we've made it into uh, a home that, that uh, reflects us as faithfully as it reflects the tradition of uh, families in the past and from the experiences and memories that we have at uh, going around building little fairy houses and building tree houses and picking the raspberries and uh, hunting for sea glass on the shore. It's just there are so many memories and so many uh, experiences uh, and we're so close to nature. We've all learned so much, uh, not only uh, in terms of nature but uh, also about each other.